Hello my friends, welcome to another watercolor tutorial. Today's tutorial is inspired by Zucker34 and it is just a very cute Easter card. Um, so what I've done is sketched out three buckets and then I put like bunny ears in this one, a bunny head in this one, and like the butt of a bunny in this one. And I wrote Hoppy Easter uh, in pencil, but you know, the greeting part is optional. I am going to just very lightly erase this so it's not as visible through the watercolor. And you can choose whatever colors that you want, but I think I'm going to go with brown, blue, and orange, or some combination like that. I don't know. I'll start with brown. Um, that's actually more of like a rust color that I just picked up. Okay, I do not like that color. Let me maybe add gray to it. Yes, that's a bit better. And this is why I say like it doesn't matter, like you don't need to know the exact color names, just like mix a bunch of things together to choose the color that you want. So first we're just gonna paint the um, the buckets and I'm doing the rim, like you know those terracotta uh, flower pots maybe that's what I meant to say not a bucket but a flower pot um, those are kind of what we're going for here so I'm painting just the rim the outside rim of it like so and then it'll come around but I have to be mindful of the bunny ears that I have sticking out out of this thing so I'm stopping just at the ears, like so. And I'm just gonna quickly grab another brush so that I don't have to rinse off my watercolor off of this brush since I still have to do the bottom of the flower pot. And I'm blending out with water some of this color so that this part is a little bit darker so it creates a nice little contrast. And I also want to take black and I'm going to be filling this pot with that black. Although I should have waited, I think, until that brown dried before I did this. Because now it's going to bleed. I never learn. I really, truly never learn. And I don't know why this is sticking out so much. I might have to adjust this somehow. Um. I ended up rinsing that brush anyway because I don't want this black to penetrate the rim but it's too late because I didn't wait and I was impatient as I am in every single video <laughs> so I'm gonna do the bottom bucket part of the flower part pot and this part right underneath here should be dark as well, but I'm leaving a little white gap because it's not fully dry like the rim and I don't want the same thing to happen that happened with that black. You know what I mean? I am taking black, it has a little bit of red in it because it was already on my palette. Perfect. Let me just add a bit more. Very good. Then I'll take my other brush and blend this out like so. 
very nice okay although It's a little more black than I wanted it to be. Like this is supposed to be bright cheery for Easter, but I'm gonna leave it cause I like the shading. I will probably fill that white part in later when this top part dries, but we'll see. No pressure, do whatever you want. Um, okay, my next one is going to be uh, like a blue, some shade of blue. I'm just gonna actually use the blue that's already on my palette, that's already dried on my palette. And we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the first one. So we're gonna do the rim part. And it's gonna circle around, but I have to be mindful to leave space for the bunny head. I don't really like that bunny head. I'm probably gonna change the the shape or whatever of it, but it's a good placeholder for now. And I'm dipping another paintbrush in water and just spreading out that pigment, kind of blending it together. So, um, hmm. I don't want to make the same mistake I made there. I do want to still make that black, like the background really dark, but I don't want it to blend, so I'm going to wait this time. That is a key thing, is learning from your mistakes. So in the meantime, I will do the bottom section again, leaving that white space between the two because it is not dry, the rim. Whenever I paint, like I'm constantly painting for the for the future, future tutorials that you'll see like months in advance. And whenever I paint them, I'm always thinking, oh man, that's so far away. Uh, and then obviously that time comes, but it's just life changes so much in, in that short amount of time. For instance, right now it is December 30th when I'm painting this, and this will be released in March, I hope. Um, so I'm watching all the tutorials that I painted in like July or August right now that were released in December. Uh, and I remember painting them in August thinking, oh my gosh, when this tutorial is released, like I'm already going to have... Like my child's already gonna be born and um, like it's gonna be Christmas and life is gonna look so different. So it's it's almost like a little mini diary, this channel for myself. But like I did not think that I'd finally have that brick wall done back in August when I filmed tutorials for December. So I wonder what what unique thing is going to happen um, when this is released in March. How different will life be? So I'm adding some black accents just in the corners here, uh, just for fun. Spruce things up a little bit. And I think this is drier than it was, so I'm just going to go ahead with it and add that blackened inner part of this pot. 
again being mindful of the bunny head that's in here although I don't know if I'm going to maintain that shape of that head I think it looks quite silly <sighs> we are spending a lot of time just painting flower pots um why don't we do I wish I <clears throat> didn't do brown this is not really an Easter color. <coughs> so I think either orange or pink. Which one? Pink. Magenta. Something more cheery. Oh, and conveniently, I already have those colors on my palette. So that's what I'm going to go with. I can't believe that it's going to be January in two days. That is, time goes by so quick, at least like up until Christmas, time goes by very quickly for me because November and December are, are basically, you know, getting ready for Christmas, the anticipation of Christmas. Everyone's cheery, Christmas music is playing. There's Christmas markets, there's tons of decor, like gathering pine cones and making fun things from, from the forest, from my own home, and candles, and I mean, you get the picture, it's just, it's very, very cozy. Um, and then January hits, and it's like gloom. <laughs> it's just, there isn't really very much to look forward to. Uh in the near future and it's sad and so I'm glad that this year we have decided to go away for a week to like a warm destination so we're going we're going somewhere warm to like an all-inclusive for a week um, when you see this video we would have already gone but it's just, uh, you know, a nice way to change things up. Something to look forward to that's going to be a little more cheery and warm. And I've never been to an all-inclusive. All-inclusives typically aren't my thing, or at least I think they aren't my thing. I'm more of a, an adventure, like buy a one-way ticket and see where where the days take me kind of traveler that's how my husband and I traveled a lot when we met um but obviously that is not possible anymore because we have a baby and kids need consistency at least a baby does like you you can't just set up a tent I mean, I'm sure people have done it, so good for them, but um, I, I don't know where I'm going with this little speech of mine. <laughs> so I'm not really going over the instructions for this lot last flower pot because I think you get the picture I'm doing the exact same thing that I did for the first two uh, where I'm adding black for some extra shading in the corners and I think I'm waiting for that top part to dry so that I can add like a darker pink in it um, I think it is mostly dry now so let me just grab something a little darker here I can hear my husband entertaining my daughter. My husband was meant to be a dad. He is such, such a good dad. I really don't know. I, I admire women who can do it alone or who don't have as, um, you know, supportive partners. 
like super women, I swear. I would not be able to do this alone. And he like he comes home from work from a long day because he has to drive an hour to work and back and takes her right from my arms and just takes care of her the whole evening or most of the evening so that I can kind of so I can paint so I can de-stress and he I am so lucky I am so so lucky um I just took some green because I thought it would be fun because I don't have very many colors here. I'm going to add grass. I'm going to add grass to my, not to my flower pots, but kind of like coming out the sides of the flower pots. Spruce it up a little bit. And you don't have to do it under every single one. <laughs> I wish you could hear him. Oh my gosh, it's adorable. Okay. Oh my gosh, what have I done? I do this in many tutorials, if you watch me regularly, where I royally mess up. So that is going to cauliflower. I know that for a fact. So I'm taking some paper towel and just dabbing that so that it doesn't get a chance to cauliflower. And I know it kind of looks bare, but I'm going to just say that was intentional, an intentional highlight. There we go. So, uh, what else can we do here? So, I still want the flower pots to dry a little bit more. This is actually dry, so I'm actually going to move on to this part here. Um, I didn't really think this through, but my rabbit was going to be brown, and I have a brown flower pot. So, we're going to have to make this rabbit like a beigey, light, cream-colored color. Um... So I'm painting the little ears. <laughs> like that. Ooh, another really exciting thing that probably means nothing to you guys. Uh, unless you're also interested in this sort of thing. I'm very into like homesteading, homemaking uh, type of content. Like that's how I try to live my life too. And I'm trying to learn lots of new skills and, um, you know, that sort of thing. And so I've been trying to learn how to make sourdough bread for so long. And I could never figure it out. Like, my loaves always had something, like, an issue with them. Uh, if I even managed to get a good starter going to begin with. And I finally figured it out. After years of trying on and off, it was the temperature all along. In the summer, it doesn't work because my we live in a forest, so the humidity is just too high um, for it to work. Uh, but like it goes moldy before it ferments. So, um, yeah, that didn't work obviously in the summer, but in the winter it didn't work before because it was too cold. My house is heated with wood and in the day, like, uh, we, it would just, you need warm temperatures, like consistently warm temperatures in order to get your starter to activate and, and do its thing. And so I put it in my oven with the light on 
and I didn't know this, but your oven light actually generates um, a, a good amount of heat. Uh, and so when I did that, it just, the starter started to rise. I was amazed, truly. And uh, I got all those beautiful bubbles going and, and I made my first loaf yesterday and it was good. It didn't rise as much as I wanted to, um, but I knew what I did wrong. I kind of uh, really, ch not cheaped out, but was lazy in the whole process because it's like a two-day process to make a loaf of bread because uh, you have to stretch and fold it a bunch of times. But this time, today I did it properly and it worked out so well. I am so proud of myself. My husband was very happy with the result. And I can now say I can make sourdough. So yay. Uh, okay, so this one's gonna be the head of the bunny. I don't like how juvenile this rabbit head looks. Or these ears. Let me perhaps try a different brush. To try and get a little bit more control. No, I made those ears way too big and just blah. Back to my trusty quadruple zero to save the day. Taking some black and mixing it with that same color. I'm thinking if I outline it, it'll maybe look a little bit more intentional. Nope, still looks bad. You can certainly perfect your rabbit head, <laughs> make it a little nicer looking than what I've done here. I wish I could erase it and just redo the ears to be a little bit more professional looking, but uh, I can't do that. So we'll just have to keep it at that. Maybe add some pink in there. Okay, this has to dry so before I can add the, um, like some of the, the nose and that sort of thing. So I am gonna let that dry. In the meantime, I am going to fill this in. Um, and I'm gonna do that just with a marker. So I pre-wrote mine because it stops you from making mistakes. Like once I left a letter out. And I could erase it because I wrote it in pencil first. So happy Easter or hoppy, hoppy Easter. Um, another thing you can do is actually outline these in black, but I'm not gonna do that because I don't wanna chance it. 
in case it ends up looking bad. Uh, what I do want to do though is take some green and just outline some of these grass strands so they stand out a bit more. I will never forget that comment that I received on one of my videos uh, like a month or so ago where the person said, no one to stop. Like that's, it just echoes in my head every time I do something like this where I keep adding things. No one to stop. <laughs> Okay, this I think is hopefully dry enough. I'm just gonna give him a little eyes, a little nose, a little mouth outline, some of the ears. Um And maybe some rosy cheeks. Looks a little bit like a creepy clown. So maybe don't add the rosy cheeks. Oh my goodness. All right, I guess we're starting over with that. I'm not gonna bother redoing that because it's just gonna look exactly the same. So this is gonna be a faceless rabbit, I think that is best for uh where my head is at at this point um let me just define this fluffy tail a little bit better define these legs a little bit better and uh there we go that is our little Easter card. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Please let me know what you think, what you would have done differently in the comments. Uh, hit like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next tutorial.